Well, Rami Houri is a professor at the American University of Beirut and is Palestinian-Jordanian. He joins us live via Skype from Beirut. Sir, thank you so much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. First of all, your reaction to at least uh, the economic part of this deal. Is it really the opportunity of the century for Palestinians? No, it's absolutely not. And I think that's been made very clear by Palestinians and most of the people in the Middle East and really most of the sensible people around the world who know anything about the Middle East. Um, it's not a very realistic plan. Um, it hasn't been supported uh, very much at all by people who count in the region. Uh, and this is a very bizarre attempt by the United States to give the illusion of serious mediation, while all of the actions that the United States government has taken in the last two years of the Trump administration uh, have uh, punished the Palestinians, pressured them, uh, put uh, economic stress on them, closed political doors to them, and then virtually uh, everything that the Israeli right-wing government of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu wants done. So it's not a very serious process at all. Um, it, it obviously hasn't had uh, much support, if any, uh, really across the region. What they've tried to do is to separate the economic part from the political part. Now, the politics of it, apparently, they would deal with uh, in a couple of months. Uh, what do you make of, of, of that argument? Is it possible to separate the two? And does it make any sense to deal with the economics before you deal with the very thorny political issues? It doesn't make sense, because the economic stress that the Palestinians are suffering is largely a function of the political occupation, exile, um, and, uh, the, and refugeehood uh, that they suffer. Uh, so you have to deal with the two things together. Uh, the attempt to promote economic growth uh, has been tried before by uh, Tony Blair and the United Nations and many others, and it just doesn't work because it's not an, the economic stress is a consequence of political denial. You have to address the political side. You can address them simultaneously. They could have held this workshop in Bahrain and held a political negotiation in Geneva. Uh, that might have worked. Uh, Palestinians want to live a decent life, but they want equal rights. So the, the Kushner talk today was he was talking about security for the state of Israel and dignity for the Palestinians. Well, dignity is, is fine. Uh, but security is what everybody needs, uh, statehood, security, sovereignty. And unless those two issues are dealt with together, uh, there's never going to be any progress. Um, obviously, the Palestinians have boycotted this meeting, and we saw from both the West Bank and Gaza, and Gaza you know, basically people dismissing uh, any of it. Where do you think this leaves the Palestinians? And for any kind of solution to state or not, do you think that ultimately the only thing to do is to wait out until this Trump administration is no longer in office? That's a short-term option. The Palestinians are in a really difficult situation because not only are they being... Uh, continually colonized by the Israelis uh, and assisted by the Americans. For instance, now the Golan Heights, which is Syrian, um, has been annexed in Israel, uh, law, was long ago, and the Americans recognize it now as part of Israel. So the, the pressures from the Israelis and the Americans are very uh, intense. But there's also troubling signs that some countries in the Gulf, like the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, are willing to slowly normalize ties uh, with the Israelis, and that might weaken some of the uh, support that uh, the Palestinians need. So there's not much the Palestinians can do right now. They're politically very weak. So they have to be steadfast, and they have to come up with a better leadership uh, and a, uni a unified Palestinian leadership that can mobilize the enormous support that exists for Palestinian equal rights with Israelis all around the world. And this is something that the Palestinian leadership really has to work on. Um, it's one of the great uh, internal failings of the Palestinians. And just to pick up on that last point, do you see any sign of that, a stronger, united Palestinian leadership? Not really. They keep talking about it, and uh, other Arab countries, the Saudis, the Qataris, have tried to step in and help uh, smooth this out with some uh, funding. Uh, but it hasn't, it hasn't worked. And so there needs to be some kind of internal change within Palestine where maybe grassroots movements or something happens uh, internally where the Palestinians can unite in one government, which has always been the case until around seven, eight years ago or so, or 10 years ago. 
uh, when when Hamas split and took over the, the Gaza Strip. Uh, but it, it will happen eventually, but it's, there's no immediate uh, signs of it. But that doesn't preclude the PLO, which still is supposed to represent all Palestinians, from trying to work out some kind of mobilization process for public opinion and political support from all over the world. Rami Houri, uh, Palestinian Jordanian professor at the American University of Beirut. Uh, sir, always great to get your views. Thank you for joining